G'day guys and welcome back. So today we're looking at 2021 and what do we hope to achieve? What does Medieval Mayhem hope to achieve out of 2021? So I'd really like to use this video as a bit of a, uh, a gauge for hopefully looking at it in 12 months time and ticking off a few boxes here and, and seeing, you know, how did I go? How did I adjust? And hopefully you guys can help me um, hold myself accountable and hold our, our little organization accountable. Rightio. So firstly, um, from a personal point of view, I really want to extend my hopes for you guys to have a very safe and prosperous new year. I hope 2021 is a year where we can share ideas and information. We can get excited about history and medieval stuff. I'm hoping that we can, you know, get into some, some really good topics and some good videos. And I hope that we can really get into some really amazing projects. That's all coming up. Righto. So um, for that to achieve, I really hope you guys can leave me some comments below and tell me what are the kind of videos and topics you want me to cover. I'm really excited, so please, please tell me. Um, I read all of my comments, and uh, where practical, I reply to all of them. All right, so firstly, from a personal point of view, I need to lose some COVID kilos, and some of those actually go back before COVID. Um, right, right now, I'm about 30 or so kilos uh, overweight. My target weight would be around 92 or something kilos. Um, let's see how that goes. So I need to get myself into training and I might even put a few videos of that up. Uh, alrighty, so in terms of Medieval Mayhem, we have around about 200 or so videos in the conceptual stage right through to pre-planning and uh, pre-production. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening. Um, there's a bunch of DIY videos that I got, you know, 80% complete on and then we've had this torrential rain the last sort of couple of weeks where I live in southeast Queensland, Australia. So I live in the greater Brisbane area. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that's been a bit interesting. Uh, so hopefully some of those projects will be coming out very soon. I'm really looking forward to them. So there's a bunch of really interesting uh, historical sewing videos we've got coming up. There's uh, a lot more that we're wanting to explore around early medieval armour and culture. A lot of that will be being fleshed out. Um, but the big project we're going to be getting ourselves into is the early medieval farm. So as you may know from some of my videos uh, in late 2020, we talked a little bit about a early medieval farm project. Now, there's a whole bunch of constricting factors around this, so uh, please bear with me and let's get into it. All right, the concept that we have is to try our best to recreate as authentically as possible an 11th century style English farm. Now, in that time, farms were not really just by a single family. You'd typically have a small community there. Um, and we're looking at, as I say, Southeast England. Now, at that time, 11th century, so 10 hundreds, we're not really talking um, purely Anglo-Saxon. That's not really, I think, a, a correct definition. Far more so is more the, the Anglo-Scandinavian. So because of the so-called Viking influence, you have generations of Scandinavians who had migrated to England, both through things like the Great Heathen Army and also much later in a peaceful fashion. We have this kind of like uh, a integration of the cultures and you can see this through the archaeology where even in places like Winchester and so on and so forth, you have these great Scandinavian longhouses and long halls being built. Um, fascinating sizes too, like enormous buildings. 
So this will be a village which will very much be an Anglo-Scandinavian style um, eventually. Now in 2021 what we're hoping to achieve is just a number of fairly uh, concise buildings. Now I've got some notes I want to refer to them so just hang on a second. From 2021 we're going to take it from a conceptual stage through 2022 um, start incorporating more buildings. 2023 we want to be more self-sufficient and 2024 we want to really expand the enterprise and and push outwards I guess. Um, now I know that sounds a bit cryptic but that I guess means that we want to go from um, a self-contained conceptual project into pushing into things like um, uh, being able to offer our services in terms of education and perhaps as a film set for locations for the LARP groups that's live action role play or SCA the Society of Creative Anarchism to use medieval reenactment groups to use there's plenty of those in southeast Queensland uh, and, and further afield this will be hopefully an amazing location that's what we've got in mind um, now there's some big issues in trying to put this together Firstly is water security. So Australia goes through two real cycles that last roughly six or seven years. So one we have a La Nina cycle which is typically a lot wetter and then we have um, the other cycle which is typically a lot drier. We also have um, big issues there with heat. So Australian summers tend to be fairly sort of hot and wet around here and winters tend to be colder and drier. There's a big issue around wood lice. So you can imagine spending sort of say five years building a great hall, unfortunately to see it invaded by wood lice and, and it not last. In fact, I know of someone who built a Viking fearing boat um, and I think it only sailed once before it was really impacted by, by wood lice and termites and that kind of thing. So. Um, and that boat, I believe, is still at the Abbey in Caboolture, Queensland, for those of you who are interested. In terms of livestock, we have threats from things like foxes, cats, feral dogs, and snakes, obviously, hawks, and, and those kind of things too, which all come into this. Um, so, I guess around some of that stuff, and, and the biggest threat we have is fire. I think um, so even just recently there's been massive fires just in the location of where we want to put the farm um, fire is something which is just part of Australia really and massive fires that can impact communities and lives and um, each year really lives are lost through through bushfire and so on so it, it does create some big limiting factors here <clears throat> which do feed into council regulations so Right now we have located a, um, we've identified a 23 acre property. We have the money aside uh, coming, it's not actually in my bank account yet, but that it will be coming to put a, a deposit on the property. The concept then would be to negotiate the, what we call a, um, the concept then would be to negotiate a mortgage with the banks that is, you pay off a certain amount every week. So that's easily achieved because um, the property is actually at a, a, a very kind of reasonable price. Um, but in terms of council, you, because of the threats from fire and flood and storm, it does impact on building design. So the building codes are typically administered by local government or what we call councils. And these are very strict. They have to be abided by. And the, the impact on that is that some of our designs and so on um, may not be as historical as we'd really like. So for example, um, thatching is probably unlikely, at least in the early stages. Um, so that will create um, a need to look at other types of roofing materials. Now there's obviously a few. You could use shingles, which is probably what we're gonna do um, turf roofs which will probably what we'll do in some instances and the other one would be tiles which we'll do in some instances as well so right um, tiles actually go back as far as the Romans 
and, and so that's perfectly reasonable to use that. All right, so what are some of the projects we want to get out of 2021, Ronio? Well, obviously at least one house. So that would be a reasonably sized house, um, which will be livable, um, probably have several rooms in it. Uh, so this is going to be a really exciting project. Now houses in those days are not like the houses we have today. So a house today, you have lots of different rooms. Um, you know, you have a, a, a lounge room where you watch TV from. Sometimes you have a games room, a kitchen, a, a dining room, all this kind of thing. No, that just would never have happened um, because people were outside so much of the time um, in, the, in the medieval period. So this will be very interesting because it, it gives us a chance to really live history and to look at what were the impacts of some of these things on daily lives and I think that's going to create some fantastic sort of uh, topics for do videos on radio um, a number of other smaller projects things like um, a well a capstan um, what else are we looking at here a carpenter's lodge workshops uh, fairly obviously a forge um, an orchard I've already got pretty much all the trees for an orchard downstairs at the moment um, so that's all ready to go. We've got a medieval style of garden, stables, uh, planning to fence off about six paddocks in 2021 and obviously do things like animal shelters and pig arcs as well. So uh, with that, I guess there's a number of restrictions from organizations like the RSPCA, which do impact on how historical, uh, as for instance, a stable could be. So stables of the medieval period were probably not um, going to be good enough for the RSPCA today. And so we're going to have to try and find a, a happy medium there. And how can we achieve something which is medieval uh, visually aesthetic, but um, does cater for the welfare of the animals in today's standards? Radio. Um, now, hopefully we'll be introducing some really interesting livestock. So obvious animals would include things like um, a donkey, goats, uh, hopefully a small population of goats, chickens, at least two breeds, one for egg laying, one for meat, uh, cows, probably Dexter cows, we'll see. Um, this is starting to get a bit more ambitious, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, and peacocks as well, peacocks are great. Um, peacocks eat the ticks and off, off the animals, that's a big problem in Australia and they also um, chase away snakes and they'll eat snakes and that kind of stuff too. So really, really fantastic animals to have and very historical too, so lots of, um, lots of interesting stuff going on there. So I'd be interested to see how that can happen, um, can it happen, uh, there's, there's definitely the money coming through. Um, the, the land is available, we should be able to negotiate that fairly reasonably. Um, so, so that'll be interesting. I'd like to see how that plays out. Um, alrighty, so that's 2021 for us. Um, please leave a comment below. I'm really, really interested. What kind of videos and what sort of topics do you want to see? How can I improve the videos that I've already done? I'm really, really interested in some feedback there. Please leave it. Uh, I do read all of the messages. It's very important to me to get your feedback and um, you know work towards better videos. I know that there's, there's improvements I could make, um, but I'm, I'm striving forwards. And I think if you compare some of my early videos to some of my more recent ones, I think there's a very palpable difference there. Rightio. All right, so 2021. Lastly, I'd like to hear what does 2021 represent for you, both in terms of a personal context and also a, a medieval or historical context. What are you hoping to achieve and how are you going to work towards achieving that? I really want you guys to hold me accountable for some of these goals and dreams. Um, I really want you guys to, to say, come on, Ben, you said you were going to get this done. What's, um, what can we do to help you achieve it? So I do have a Patreon page. So for those of you who can spare a little bit of money, $2 a week, $5 a week, $10 a week, whatever it might be, I would really like you to engage with the Patreon um, and support the channel because these projects are going to be quite ambitious. Uh, um, building a medieval style house 
uh, stables, workshops, and all that kind of stuff. This is um, this is really big stuff and will require a lot of support. Uh, it'll require a lot of application processes, uh, design, registration, and all of that kind of thing. So there's a lot of expense there, and we'll have to see how that plays together. At the moment, this YouTube channel is not monetized, so. Um, you know, I'm funding this myself and I only have limited funds to work it from because I am a single dad. So if you feel you could engage on the, on the Patreon side, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it'd really help me out a lot. Okay, so big projects. I don't think anything like this has ever been done in Australia before. Um, and I'm hoping that's not a warning that it's not going to be done because I'm going to be really disappointed if it turns out that uh, I can't do it. There is one other big uh, restriction here which comes into this and that is things like fencing. So we've already talked about termites and how that can affect woodwork but uh, perimeter fencing and that kind of thing is, is really important both from an animal husbandry or a stewardship sort of point of view but also from a security point of view. So um, preventing predation from the animals we've already talked about, things like feral cats, feral dogs, um, dingoes, snakes, and so on. Um, that's really hard to do, and you do need, obviously, modern fencing to do that. So that, unfortunately, creates a few issues. Um, but we can work with that. And the other side of that coin, I think, is that um, from an animal husbandry point of view. So some of the older fences... Um, you might see in, in a historical context would be wicker fences and so on uh, that are, are made from uh, interlacing and, and weaving strands of um, willow trees and that kind of stuff. So we want to keep it as authentic as possible but these fences have to sort of stand up. So for example um, because where this farm is hopefully going to be located we don't really want animals escaping because the fences weren't up to it and you know a big cow or a horse we're talking five six seven hundred kilograms uh, of very free-spirited animal and if they want to get through the fence then they'll push through the fence um, and there's not always a lot you can do especially if they're going in a herd uh, so modern fences and, and in some aspects of the farm are going to be um, critical so so there we go Alrighty guys, um, really big things happening. I really hope we can put this together. If you can, I'd love to hear from you um, with some ideas as we've talked about, or if you could join us on Patreon, I'd really truly appreciate it. Alrighty, um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.